All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back with y'all. I think uh, when I was trying to be work fine, now that my back is broken again. So, uh, must be my fault. My, my presence here. But uh, it's good to be back. I'm excited. Uh, I wanted to introduce, well, you guys know the news, but uh, I was going to be here, and then the electrician called me in the service. So I had to go out and talk to him, uh, try to figure out what's going on. But uh, anyway, I'm really thankful for God's love. Do you know one of my favorite things is when things don't go according to plan, they still go according to God's plan, and usually God has something up his sleeve. So God actually prefers it when things don't work out the way we like, because then that leaves room, you know? Gideon has thousands of people. He's like, that's too many. You need less soldiers, okay? Uh, I need mean, less, all right? Paul's like, I'm really weak. This hurts. He's like, yeah, I'm going to keep that there. You know, so anyways, uh, this is God's way, all right? So uh, I always get excited when things don't work. That means God's up to something, all right? So I want you to have that perspective as well. That's exactly how God works. Now, uh, this is Pastor Luis, who leads is the famous leader of our Seed Not Lose uh, ministry. So, 66 books, one thing. What is the thing? Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And uh, I want just to thank you all that, the pastors, for the privilege uh, that I have the, uh, uh, to share uh, the word of God with you guys. Um, I want to just start reading uh, Romans 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to 7. And the title of my message uh, this morning is... The gospel changes everything. Will you say that after me? The gospel changes everything. And I'm a testimony of that. So I'm going to preach something. I'm going to share something that, uh, that I believe that is it's working in my life. And uh, for the last uh, at least 30 years, I've been preaching the same message that changes people's lives. So I believe in this message 100%. And uh, I'm gonna just go and read uh, Romans 1, and then we'll, we'll just uh, go through my notes. And I'm gonna just read it, and this is the NLT, New uh, Living Translation. Um, it says here, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus. Chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach, to preach his good news. In that word, good news is gospel. Uh, the Greek word of gospel is uh, evangelion, evangelion. So what Paul is saying is, uh, I've been sent out to preach the gospel, the evangelion. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets. The 39 books in the Holy Scriptures. The good news, the gospel, is about his son. In his early life, he was born into King David's family line. And he was shown to be the son of God. Why? When he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we call him the son of God. He's Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege, the authority, and apostles to tell the Gentiles everywhere 
to tell the Gentiles everywhere. We'll just say everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere what God has done. Not what he's going to do. What has done for them. So that they will believe. Not just believe. And obey you. Bringing glory to his name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong, to belong to Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, give you grace and peace. This is the way Paul uh, starts writing to the Romans. But I want to just um, go through the word gospel. What is the meaning? What's, what's the meaning of the, the word gospel? The word gospel in English finds its roots in the Greek word evangelion. The word evangelion literally, literally means news that brings great joy. News that brings great joy. When we hear the word gospel in today's Christian culture, our minds and hearts immediately run to the spiritual implications. But in the first century, most minds and hearts will raise to the political and historical implications. For those living in the time of Jesus, the word gospel by use was used to refer life altering, history making, and world shaping news. Evangelion, that's our, our word in Spanish, Evangelio. If you speak Spanish, that, the, that's where it comes from. Evangelion, Evangelion. That's the word Evangelio, Gospel. What others uh, say about the Gospel? I love uh, reading uh, Timothy Keller, and his definition for Gospel is an announcement of something that has happened. Listen, it's an announcement of something that has happened in history. It's, it's in the past. Something that has been done for you. Tell to your neighbor, tell to the, the person that you say, it's done. It's been done for you. There is nothing to do. It's been done. It's, it's a done deal. The gospel is an announcement of something that has happened in history. Something that has been done for you that changes your status forever. Forever. It's not good advice. It is good news. Has happened, has been done for you. Uh, and here, right, it says, the gospel is the royal announcement that the crucified, crucified and raised Jesus who died for our sins, who died for our sins, who died for our sins, and rose again, according to the scriptures, has been enthroned as, uh, as the true Lord of the world. When this gospel, when this evangelion, when this evangelio is preached, God calls people to salvation. Wow! God calls people to salvation. Leading them to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ and the risen Lord. I want to read what Paul says about the gospel in Romans 1, uh, 16 to 17. What is the gospel for, for, for Paul? And he writes, For I am not ashamed of this evangelion, evangelion, gospel. I'm not, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. The news is about Jesus, about the Christ, about the Messiah. For I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power. The word power in Greek is dunamis. Uh, dynamita in Spanish. Dunamis. It's an explosion. Something happens when, when I'm preaching. Uh, an explosion happens and the people are listening. Uh, something happened in their hearts, minds, and spirits. That's what Paul is saying. For I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power, it's the power, it's the power of God at work, in action, saving everyone who believes. The you first, and then also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God, how God made us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith, not by work. The gospel does it everything. So we need 
just to believe, put our faith, our confidence on Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. That's what Paul is saying. Salvation is, is being accomplished from start to finish just by faith. By faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. Good news is gospel. Good news is gospel. So, after this little introduction, I want to just to, to uh, uh, separate my, my, my uh, message in four core points. Number one, it will be everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. Number two, uh, then uh, bad news. Number three, good news. And then number four, go. That's, that's the message. Everything was perfect. The bad news, the good news, and then God. So we start with everything was perfect. When we read Genesis 1 and 2, we realize that Adam and Eve enjoy a perfect relationship with God. A perfect. Would you say perfect? Perfect. Everything was perfect in Genesis. Say perfect. Perfect. Everything was perfect. I, I, I just, I, I can't imagine how it was it, you know? It was perfect. So when we read Genesis 1 and 2, we realize that Adam and Eve enjoyed a perfect relationship with God. They didn't suffer. Mm -hmm. They didn't get sick. Hallelujah. Yes. They did not suffer. They didn't get sick. They didn't know. They did not know racial discrimination. They did not age. I like that. <laughs> Their knees oh, didn't hurt every morning when they, they wake up. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, you know? No problem. Nothing. Everything was perfect. They did know, they did not know death. Wow. Everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. But this is, yeah, problem stuff. They decide to disobey God. The first sin is disobedience. What happened with disobedience? Here the, the bad news. What are the bad news? So when, when they disobey God, consequences of disobedience, disobedience, loss of righteousness, separation from God, cursed environment, physical death. Whoa. Yes. So after paradise, from paradise they will live in a world full of suffering, yeah, disease, poverty, racial discrimination, natural disasters, wars, aging and death. All of this comes from the wrath of and curse of God on the world because disobedience. The world is insane and we need to be rescued. However, the root of our problems is not uh, this horizontal relationship. So some of the issues, some of the problems that we have in our marriages with our neighbors uh, is, is not like this. This is not a problem. The problem of humanity is that we don't have a good relationship right there with God. So if we don't have a good relationship with God, we can't have a good relationship with the ones on the right or left. So the world is insane and we need to be rescued. Although they are often obvious, it is our vertical, vertical relationship with God. If we have a good relationship with God, then it's a process to start having this good relationship with others. All human problems are ultimately symptoms. 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 And the cause of our problems is that we are separated from God. That's the problem. We are separated from God. The reason for all uh, this misery, all these effects, all uh, the curse, all that we are not reconciled, we are not reconciled with God. That's that's the problem. That's the problem. <coughs> we as uh, church, you uh, guys, 
guys sent us to Tijuana to this mission trip. And uh, we were driving, and before we enter Mexico, I started crying because what Mexico needs is not a new president. Uh, Mexico also needs a new religious system. What Mexico needs is the gospel. What Mexico needs is Jesus. Jesus is the answer for our problems. So the human being has made an effort. I'm going to repeat this. So the human being has made an effort. Say an effort. An effort to get closer to God. So all of us, we, we, are, we already create some rules, uh, religions, uh, religious systems, uh, traditions. I was reading the other day, right now, right now, on earth, we have at least 4,200 new religions right now. So what human beings have been doing is creating rules. I need to obey this rule. I need to go through this process to get saved. No. No, 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 no. We don't need more rules. Listen, rules will put a heavy weight in our spirit, in our heart. Look what Jesus, the words of Jesus in Matthew 11, 28, 30 says, Are you tired? Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burn out on religion. Are you tired? If you are, Jesus says, come to me, get away with me, and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn. The enforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy on or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. When, when Jesus is uh, saying this word, the words that he's telling to the Jewish community, and the Jewish uh, religion system already create 613 new laws to obey. That's why Jesus said, are you trying to try to keep up with the rules of your system, your religious system? Come to, come to me. The answer to our problems is not in a religious system. Please listen. The answer is in a person. Who is that person? It's Jesus. Who is that person? It's Jesus. Who is that person? The good news, this is the good news. The good news is Jesus, Jesus is the gospel. Jesus is the gospel. The gospel is Jesus. And Jesus is the message. Jesus is the message. Come on up. Come on. Just share something. I believe, I believe the words in this book. I believe. This is, this will change your life. So if you're here and you've been you trying to obey rules, to go through a religious system and you can't find rest, I will just invite you, come to Jesus. I'm not inviting you to come to a religious system. Come to Jesus. Bela Jesus, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Why do I believe in this message? Because the gospel changes everything. The gospel changes everything. The gospel changes everything. Part of my story is I'm from Mexico. Uh, I was born when my mother, I think she was like 14, uh, 15 years old. My father left her. Uh, my mom uh, went back to Toluca, it's a city next to Mexico City. And uh, I was born in that city, actually in, in a kitchen. My 
My grandparents have a house and then a kitchen, and I was born in the kitchen. After I was born, three months later, my mom tells to my grandmother, Can you take care of my son? Just keep an eye on him for maybe one or two hours. And those uh, two hours became ten years. So ten years later, my, my mom uh, shuts off. I remember when she came with toys, and I don't know who is this lady. And my grandma, at that moment I called her mom, uh, my uncle I called him brother, my aunt is my sister. Uh, my mom stays for two, three days, and then she went back to Mexico City. And then the neighbor uh, calls me and says, hey, who is your mom? And I said, I visit you, right? My mom, oh, she's been here the whole time. No, 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 the lady that just left. No, that's my sister. No, that's your mom. What? So he, I went through a very hard time, a very rebellious uh, time. Uh, at the age of 10, uh, 10 I left that house of my, my uh, uh, grandmother. I went to Toluca, the city, it's a city outside of Mexico City. Um, I started living on the streets, how myself. So then uh, we got uh, the World Cup. We love soccer in Mexico. So 1986, we, we got the World Cup coming to Mexico. And uh, police officers, they were patrolling the city, you know. They want to try, you know, all the cameras from all the world. They're trying to fill the cities. And then the police officer, hey, you don't need to live here. You don't need to sleep here. I said, I don't have any place to go. Well, if I come back tomorrow, we'll take you. I said, you take me. I was joking, you know, to some fun of it. So I was living with my friends at Burundanga, El Pico Chulo, you know, that's a nickname for my friends, a little gang on the street. So we're living on the street, and then the next day, these guys, police officers, came and said, You're still here. You gotta go. I said, I don't have a place to go. So they said, You're coming with us. Okay, take me. And they took me. So they put on this patrol. They took me to the uh, police station. There were like 300 police officers just uh, uh, staying there. And then these two guys, hey, uh, Chip, this little kid, uh, you know, he's, he's a little rebellious. Uh, he doesn't have a place to go, so what do we do with him? And the uh, uh, chief commander asked me, what do I do? I don't know. I just need a place to stay. Well, there are three conditions. You will work for us. Uh, uh, then you're going back to school. Uh, and then uh, you stay here. But you need to go back to school. Is that a deal? Uh, uh, can I eat every day? Yes, you will eat every day. Okay, I will stay. <laughs> so I'll stay there from the age of uh, uh, 11 to 18. So at the age of 17, I became a police officer in that area. So I met uh, three Mexican presidents. I met a Maradona during. Uh, 1986, <laughs> I met all these Brazilians, somebody from Brazil, I met, uh, I used to play with these guys, I used to go and train with them, I was a little kid going place to place, and then somebody invited me to a youth conference, and then they said, you come, you need to listen to this message, what message, you gotta come, so I went to this youth conference, I heard for the first time that God loved me, me. That God will take me the way I just come to Him and He will receive me the way I am. So after three days, one preacher came, started saying, What you need is hope. What you need is rest. What you need is love. What you need is forgiveness of your sin. Jesus is the one already did it on the cross. Would you receive him as your Lord and Savior? I stepped up, I went to the altar, I cried like a baby, and for the first time, I felt the love of God from my head to my toes. For the first time, I felt love. The gospel of Jesus, everything. And for the last 30 years, I've been preaching this message because it changes everything. It changes everything. Do I believe in this? Do I believe this message? Yes, I do, 100%. And I'm here to tell you there is hope for you. 
There is hope for your marriage. There is hope for your kids. There is hope for your family members. Yes, there is hope because there is power in the gospel. There is so much power in the gospel. So Paul is saying, this letter is for Paul, a slave of Christ. What he's saying is, I belong to Jesus. Joseph Bagat to be an apostle and sent out to preach his uh, the good news that God promised this good news long ago to the prophets and the Holy Scripture. What Paul is saying is we need to go and preach this gospel everywhere. Say it with me, everywhere. 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 So we get the message, we receive the message. We believe the message, we obey it, and then we give it to others. We receive the message, we believe the message, we obey it, and then we give it to others. What a privilege, what a privilege was to go with the team that you guys sent us to Mexico and just to take this gospel everywhere. We need to take this message to the Philippines, to Africa, to Falls Church, to Arlington. Everywhere, because there is power in this message. There's so much power in this message. Would you stand up, please? Would you pray with me? Jesus, you are the answer for our needs. We don't need another uh, religious system. We don't need. We don't need to obey more rules. No, no, no. What we need is a person. The answer, the, the, the answer for our needs and problems is Jesus. Is Jesus. I still remember the days when I was living on the streets with no hope. No future. But by your grace, the message came to me. And this is the message that I still believe in and I still have hope. Because you love me. You love me. I want to pray. God, that if somebody is here that feels like there's no hope, there's no future, that this morning, by hearing your word, by hearing your word, Holy Spirit, come, bring hope, and pray for every marriage, every children, every young life here. This is just the way you've been working in my life. The way you've been so gracious to me, I pray for every single person here. Just the way I found hope in you, they will find 